Welcome to Sermon Bay Small Groups. Hang on, I need to dry my mouth with Mel Gibson's napkin right here. You want to see it, Sherm? Even smells like him. All right, it is. All right, so there it is, the real thing, Mel Gibson's napkin. All right, that's for you guys, a little special extra because you're in small groups. So today we talked about... Um, about being rooted in Christ. What does a rooted life look like? It's, it's a fruitful life. It's a life where you are not by great effort growing the fruits of the Spirit, but your life because you're filled with the Spirit, obedient and rooted in Christ. You just, you basically, what happens when the vine is connected to the branches? The branches bear fruit. We become fruitful when we're rooted in Christ. And today we talked about it and we understood that we are either going to be rooted in Christ, deeply rooted, very fruitful, or we're going to be like chaff. Remember, I used that onion skin, and I showed you how like you blow on it, it goes away. That's what we're talking about, the difference between the rooted life in Christ and the life of chaff that chases everything in this culture is one that is either fruitful or it's, well, it blows away. And that really is the heart of the message. What will you be rooted in, this culture, which easily moves around, or into the Word of God, the community of God, in a small group like you're in right now. That's how we get rooted. That's how we're faithful and how God uses, how God not uses, but how God helps us become fruitful in the lives we live. Our fruitfulness is for the benefit of the world around us. So grace and peace as you guys get ready to dive in and talk about this. So did you know roots have four main functions? It's kind of cool to learn. A little bit of science for you today. Erica looked it up. I'm not good with science. But um, she looked this up and researched it. First of all, roots, their four main functions. Number one, to absorb water and nutrients. I think we all knew that. Uh, two, you're good. Come on through, Neil. Two, um, the, the roots stabilize the tree and help it um, get anchored into the ground. I think we all knew that. Three, the roots store nutrients in food for the tree. I didn't know that. I didn't know that the roots stored nutrients. It's kind of like their own little root cellar. Okay. Um, so I love that, that it stores it. So in a season of a drought, there's still nutrients in life underground that are hidden in the roots of the tree to give it life. So point number four, the, the roots carry the reproductive um, elements of the tree. They have within them what it takes for an oak tree to produce an acorn, which is a fully functional tree within seed form. I never knew that, that that's where the reproductive qualities of the tree would produce whatever the acorn needed to be fruitful. And I think that's really interesting for us. Um, do you think the functions of roots in nature correspond to the functions of roots in our Christian life? Question two, and, and forgive me, I'm going to read this. It's pretty in-depth. When Paul wrote to the church in Colossae, he had a lot of things to straighten out with them. The new believers had moved on from the original message of Jesus to some new and incorrect teachings. People in church were putting strict demands on behavior, especially what people could eat and drink, a lot of legalism. Others were encouraging the worship of angels. And finally, there was Gnosticism. Gnostics are these people, um, they were trying to get a foothold in the church community. And really what they did is they understood, Gnostics uh, believed that uh, the physical world, what we can feel and touch, is inherently evil. The only pure world is spiritual. So Gnostics believed that, um, that everything spiritual is good, everything physical is bad, and they taught that God was unknowable, which is a lie, and the world, or as we call it, matter, that everything that was created was done so by a lesser God. To achieve salvation, Gnostics taught and believed that one had to get in touch with their inner secret knowledge. You can tell how this is going to work out. This was all very far from what the Christians had originally been taught. That is why Paul wrote to them regarding what they had received in Christ Jesus their Lord, to live their lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as they were originally taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Why do you think the false teaching slipped in so quickly? Question number three. How can you personally 
Uh, live a life with some disciplines that root yourself in Christ. Question number four, the psalmist doesn't compare um, the righteous as a good tree and the wicked as a bad tree. He uses an altogether different um, kind of image for the wicked um, or the sinners. He uses chaff to describe the wicked. Why do you think he does this? The psalmist talked about a tree producing fruit. What does this look like? How do you imagine it? So how long can a tree that's been uprooted, like picture, picked up by the roots, how long can it be separated from its source of water before the roots and the tree dies? I can't express fully how important this is to you, to us as a church, to you and to me that we are rooted in Christ intentionally. And these rhythms we've given of being in the Word of God, being in the community of God, and being in a small community of God really matters to our spiritual well-being. It is life and health to us. We believe that every member of the church is a spirit-filled, life-giving member of the body. They are part of what we should be connected to. And so we understand for this series, for this time, that what we're doing in these small groups, talking about scripture, making guesses, leaning forward and seeing, really discerning what the word's saying is important for us to grow and to live fully into the image of God as he, or the image, the calling of God, as he has called us according to his purposes, not ours. So I'm excited for you, hoping you get rooted and connected to this community and living fruitfully for the benefit of the world around us to see and know him who died for them as well as for us. It's a great time in these small groups. I hope you enjoyed it. And I think I'm, I'm done. Have a great day.